Good afternoon and welcome to this special RCB Radio Sport West Clare show, a special feature edition uh, to, to look ahead to the final penultimate games on, on the Division 2 Alliance Football League involving uh, the counties uh, remaining. This is Jim Collin here from RCB Radio Sport West Clare, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.ie. I'm delighted um, today to be joined by an All-Ireland winner, an Arma great in uh, Oshin McConville. And I suppose that uh, Oshin, uh, from an Arma perspective, your own perspective, a lot to play for in these remaining uh, two uh, re- remaining rounds of the Allianz Football League. And I suppose for all counties, uh, an awful lot to play for. It, it really is a cutthroat division. Yeah, it is. And I think that's the way it's been over the last number of years. I think there is a few teams who are, have been up and down into from Division 1 back up, down into Division 2. I think there's also, um, you know, teams who come off from Division 3 and I suppose want to try and uh, stay in Division 2. Um, there's more emphasis now than there ever has been in Division 2 because obviously, you know, we're looking at a Tier 2 system, you know, from next year. Um, although I haven't heard any any word of a Tier 2 system for a while now. Um, but it, I think that's what makes it uh, comp- very, very competitive. I think the teams who come down from Division 1 have had that experience are now very strong. But uh, look at the, the next uh, round of games. You know, we're still, you know, we're at round five, you know, of mm-hmm. games. And we still really don't know where we stand. I mean, uh, you know, we fight games played and we still don't know where we stand. So that tells you everything you need to know about Division 2. I think... Um, Armagh's game uh, with Roscommon is, is huge for both counties this weekend because at the end of the day, whoever wins that should more than likely uh, get promotion. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, everything's to play for for all the counties. Apart from Fermanagh, for actually, every single other county could actually still get promoted uh, and, and there's a good cause. Uh, in terms of that, I suppose Fermanagh have been rocked uh, in the last one or two weeks. I was speaking to their manager, uh, Ryan McManaman, as well, and he told me that Saturday they only had 10 lads training. They had uh, 18 lads in, uh, in terms of isolation. Uh, I suppose they travelled down to Innes uh, this week to Clare side who've been rejuvenated by the return of Gary Brennan, the return of Jamie Malone, the return of Aaron Fitz and Podge Collins. Podge Collins also throwing his hand into the Clare footballer. So that's four automatic, you presume, four starters to come back into Clare's side as well. Is it uh, looking ahead for, for Mana who could be without a few starters or one? That is, is that game a more daunting challenge now uh, where, where they would have faced in the league going back in March or April with, with players' absentees and obviously their own situation? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously, you know, seven months down the lane, Clare in a much better position than than uh, if they had a player for Man that you know back then. I think um, I wouldn't believe everything that that you hear about from Man. I think you know ten players training. I think there may have been a few more than that, um, but obviously they are depleted. I think that's the most important thing to say. Uh, they've been ravaged by you know, by the virus, obviously. But I do still think that uh, Fermanagh will not be easily be- beaten, and I think all of the chat over the last couple of weeks, I suppose, wouldn't have wouldn't have helped in that. Um, you know, Colin Collins would be thinking that you know, well, maybe he won't be thinking, but some of the players may be thinking that that Fermanagh will come down and they'll, they'll get some sort of an easy. Claire will get some sort of an easy raid. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think like all of the games this weekend, it's going to be a complete dogfight. People don't really know where they are as far as fitness goes. A lot of boys have been finished with club championship now for some time and you're reliant on them to get up to speed very, very quickly. I know there has been challenge matches up and down the country this past while, but I still don't think that that gets you properly up to speed. So, you know, some teams are going to take a week and uh, a week or two and, you know, you don't have a week or two. You need to get you need to get straight into it. I mean, we're talking about two two rounds of national league games. Some of them very very important games, like the Clare game, like the Clare for Man game. And I just think that you know Clare are in a, a great position this this week as long as they don't take for Man too lately because for Man when the backs have been to the wall over the last couple of years, have done have done you know really really well defensively. They're very very difficult to break down. That that won't be any different. That won't be any different regardless of, of what the personnel is at the weekend. So I think that's something that Clare need to be wary of. If Clare are wary of that, 
uh, and have the house in order, then you know it's a game that they could, they should conceivably win. And if they win that, you know, you know they're looking at promotion, lose it, and you're staring relegation in the face. And again, that just shows you the tightness of Division Two. I suppose, uh, Oshin, another game, it's uh, intriguing at the weekend in terms for the losers more than the winners, I suppose. Kildare versus Cavan. Kildare are on four points. Um, Cavan are on six. But obviously, um, one one eye ahead is Clare have both Kild- Kildare and Cavan on head to head. So if Kildare were to lose against Cavan and Clare were to beat Fermanagh, Kildare are in a real precarious situation. So it's absolutely uh, mutely, uh, a must win, you'd imagine, for uh for Kildare, but obviously Cavan, if they have any promotion aspects, they have to win it as well. And if Cavan lose it, then they're a player and have them on head to head as well. So they're in a real relegation dogfight. And then Kildare will have them on head to head. So it's a real, real big game as well. Yeah, no, that's a that's a massive game. And I think, you know, anybody who remembers back to the first game of, of Division Two, Armagh played uh, Cavan on a Saturday night and Armagh completely obliterated them. I thought um, that Cavan would be uh, cannon fodder for the rest of, for the rest of the league, and they come out and they pulled off some unbelievable results. You know they beat Le- beat Leash I think uh, round two or round three, and uh, they got themselves right back in there. They play they were <laughs> they were a team seven months ago playing with a lot of confidence. Obviously that all has changed. But anyway, you've seen the Cavan Championship. It was as good a championship as it was around the country. I thought, you know, not just for entertainment value, but I thought there was a huge amount of quality in it as well. Um, I covered a couple of the games down there, and I thought that, uh, you know, there's players that maybe we haven't seen a lot of that, you know, have the possibility of breaking into that team. Like, I mean, a lot of people are still talking about Kildare, uh, you know, talking about Kildare as uh, potential rivals for Dublin and Leinster. I mean, you know, they have struggled badly in Division 2. And unless seven months on, that has changed dramatically. Uh, they are in severe trouble at the weekend. Well, we could be talking about Kildare going into the last match, needing a win uh, to have any possibility even of staying up. And uh, to me, you know, that tells you all you need to know. First of all, about, you know, we've already talked about um, Division 2 and and uh, how tight that is, but also it tells you about how poor Leinster football is and 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 has been. So uh, this is a massive game for Gildare at the weekend. It's a must-win game for them, and you know you're trying to get players up to speed. You're trying to get players fit. You're trying to think ahead to the championship. You're trying to think of ahead to your last game. You're trying to get certain players game time. You know, Kildare are, are definitely one of the teams this weekend. That, that aren't able to do that. They, do, they don't have that luxury. They have to uh, go out. They have to hit the ground run. They have to win that. That's a game that they must win. You know, and we're talking, as I say, seven months on, you know, we're talking about, you know, players who um, haven't played for the county, as I said, for, for seven months, and we're talking about must win games. And the preparation obviously hasn't been ideal. The Kildare Championship was, was delayed three weeks because of the lockdown. You know, they're not back together that long. So, uh, it's going to take everything that Kildare have to win that game um, but it's as I say it's a must win game and that's the first, first day out and I suppose uh, two other teams are playing at the weekend and I suppose for the winner it's guaranteed safety you'd imagine in, in Leash and Westmead for the loser they're in big big trouble as well I suppose given that they're round the, their last game uh, for both counties is a very difficult uh, game indeed so Leash versus Westmead probably both two both uh, teams who are predicted to be in the relegation dogfight are probably coming up uh, from Division uh, 3, but they're just hanging there or there about, uh, floating between two boats at the moment, uh, Oshin. And I suppose for the winner, it's uh, they'll have guaranteed Division 2 football uh, for next year. But again, the loser is going into the last game needing, needing to win, really, to have a chance of staying up as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, you look at Leash's performance, it'd be complete Jekyll and Hyde stuff. Uh, you know, they were able to beat Armagh down there and say Cavan went down there and beat them. And, you know, that was a result that, you know, nobody's seen coming. Uh, I think, you know, if I was looking at that, if you're looking at that game from afar, you're thinking that's a game re- realistically Lee should be winning, you know, when you look at them on paper. But Westmead have been dogged. And, uh, you know, they will feel that they have a real opportunity to win that game. And if they do 
win that game then as you say that puts Leash in, in severe bother but again preparation when you think of the preparation that Leash have had I mean their championship like is literally you know only done and dusted and uh, you know what preparation has Mike Cork got uh, you know they wanted to extend their championship because they wanted to give players more of a run but there's players who, who haven't played now for five weeks you know competitively uh, in Leash and they're going straight into uh, to, into again what is a must win game at the weekend so preparation is not ideal and uh, I, I'm pretty sure you, you watch a lot of pr- premiership stuff and any of the premiership stuff you watch very very early on uh, after the lockdown I mean the amount of injuries was huge and, and I think teams are trying to they're trying to win games they're trying to guard against injuries and they're trying to get uh, players some game time it's not a conundrum that is ideal for any inter-county manager, but I suppose if I look at that game at the weekend, realistically, that's a game that Lee should be winning. And I suppose, uh, Oisín, uh, in terms of your own county now, um, uh, they've been knocking on the door for the last year, few years in terms of Division 1. A difficult uh, game going to Roscommon at, at the weekend, because Roscommon obviously win that as uh, a promoter. I suppose for our last prospect, they like to get the job done this weekend, I suppose. If they win it this weekend, they're more than more than certainly up but uh, in terms of Arma, if they don't get the job done they're coming down to Cusick Park in Innes on the last day and if Clare are beaten uh, Clare beat Fermanagh then that could be an absolute that, that win or that could actually get promoted uh, on the final day or likewise if Arma, uh do come down and Fermanagh You just froze Oshin, can you hear me now? Yeah, no, I was just texting you. You just froze there. Yeah. So I was just saying to you in relation to coming down to Innes on the last day, if our man uh, aren't victorious, everything will be on the line for them. Uh, so it's very important, I suppose, for our man perspective to try and get the job uh, done this weekend. But Ross Common will know as well a win and they're up, and it's a difficult uh, place to go. So for our man perspective, you'd be hoping uh, very much to, to get the two points and not having to come to Innes at the final day with a Clare either going for promotion or a Clare trying to avoid relegation? Yeah, I'm on people who have uh, a lot of nightmares when it comes to Clare. Uh, you know, we've had a, a couple of uh, a couple of games that we would rather forget against Clare over the last number of years. Um, Arma will definitely want to get the job done this weekend. I think uh, preparation has been okay for Arma. Obviously, uh, you know, we had a COVID outbreak as well, which, which limited things, things for two weeks. Um, but uh, I know they're back up and running now. They have a couple of challenge matches under the belt, and I think both of those challenge matches uh, went, went pretty well. Uh, against pretty strong teams, so uh, that's a game I expect Alma to win. Uh, you know the Roscommon game, get that done and dusted, and hopefully then gives the opportunity to give you some give some game time. You know against against Clare, depending on other results, and just obviously making sure that that they've gained promotion at this stage. But I think it's high time for this Alma team who have progressed well uh, to get to start to play a Division One football, pit themselves against the best, and. Uh, and uh, you know to get into Division One and try and sustain that for a number of years because you don't want to be a team that that is yo-yoing. But remember, two years ago only, you know, Alma were a, a yo-yo team between Division Two and Division Three. So uh, they have made a huge amount of progress, um, and I think some of the young players who come on have, have really kicked Alma on to the next level. Uh, Roscommon will be tough, very very tough, very dogged. Uh, uh, but Arma, Arma, I think, uh, are in a very, very good position to win that game this weekend and hopefully secure promotion. And I suppose, Oshin, uh, lastly, uh, for the last 30 seconds, uh, just from the sound of you talking there, you seem to indicate that you think Fermanagh will will exit uh, a div- a Division 2. And by the sound thing, you think Kildare will probably join them. And uh, as for promotion, you're probably hopeful that... Uh, 
Arma will go up and do you think it's uh, Ross Common to join him on the final day? I think there's a good chance that both Arma and Ross Common will go up. Um, as far as Kildare going down, um, Kildare always made for me uh, along with Fermanagh. So, uh, you know, that's a massive game as for both of those counties at the weekend. Uh, and again, you know, from a Leinster uh, championship point of view, I mean, if, if you're going to have anybody who's going to, you know, run the dubs close, you'd imagine that that would be somebody like Kildare. But there's no chance they're going to do that from, from the bottom of Division 2 stroke Division 3. And I suppose, Oshin, I suppose one last question there to put you. I suppose much is made about the Ulster Championship, but the championship, but I just want to talk to you about the Munster Championship for a second. Not really the Kerry and Cork game, but your own perspective on what Clare and Tipperary for the last eight years have been waiting to meet in the Munster sort of football championship. Uh, they do clash uh, this time around. Uh, and all, Tip have been recruiting, Clare have been recruiting, and Tip have the likes of Michael Quindlevin back. Um, they have a few Liam Casey back, a few more. Claire obviously have uh, Brennan back and Malone back and Aaron Fitz. So that's going to be a real blockbuster, you think, in terms of normally in Munster every year it's either Cork or Kerry, but Claire and Tipperary has the prospect of it being a real good game in Munster this year. And you would you agree that you fancy the winner of that to reach a Munster final? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know this is as you say this is you know it's a, it, this is a that's a, that's a proper game proper bit of rivalry and I think that now both teams are are set up you know as well as they have ever been I think there's a, there's a, there's even though Claire have got more players in there's been a sense of consistency in what you know Colin Collins you know have done a lot of uh, the young lads seem to have come through I mean like I've watched Keelan Saxon for a number of years I watched him up in Armagh one day when when it wasn't going well for, for Claire at all and you know he's able to uh, to drag them back into the game and I think uh, defensively for me that has been the biggest improvement in Clare you know when I when I when I when, I, when I've watched them over the last probably uh, 12 to 18 months and I think if they continue to improve that side of things I think you know there's no reason why like I mean everybody talks about you know Cork uh, you know being the biggest challengers to carry but people are talking when people talk about that they're talking about tradition they're not. They're not talking about what they're seeing uh, in front of their faces because if they were, then they would realise that you know, as far as uh, the second best team in 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 Munster right now, I I do believe that that is clear. I think uh, Cork seem to be coming again, but uh, if we're talking about the status quo, then I I think that. Clare are the team that can uh, challenge for that second place. It's difficult then because, you know, Kerry just seems so far ahead of everybody else. And th th that's not the only province that that's happening in, but uh, I suppose that's the real issue for Clare is, 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 is making sure that they, um, that they make themselves, you know, number two, first of all, provincially. And remember, next year, well, we hope, at least next year won't be knockout football, and that chance of further progression will be um, will be possible. And I say that you know with the with uh, with those players that they have got back in, with those in mind, and and those staying around the place. Uh, Oshin, uh, thanks a million as always, and uh, we value your insight. And hopefully, it's a prospect uh, prosperous league uh, campaign for our uh, and a prosperous championship as well. Take care, Oshin. 100%. Thanks, Jim. Cheers.